All right, let's talk about the two brains. You have the little brain, the primal part of your body, also known as pretty much the lizard brain, okay? And by the way, marketers play upon your lizard brain. I have some books here in my studies of all of this stuff, and I can't say the guy's name because it's about 15 syllables. I don't, I don't know if it's out on display. I think it's one of those books I didn't want to put out on display. My wife was going through my books, and she's like, where do you want this one? I'm like, eh, let's put that one out. That's pretty good. And here's one that's, that's not so much. But um, I can't think of the name of it. His uh, name starts with a C, and it's about 20, 20 letters. And if he writes about manipulation and, and, things, and, and things of that nature. And it's books on persuasion. If you Google persuasion, you should be able to, to find uh, his name. And um, my apologies to him. And I'll, I'll get that for you next week. But anyway, that these marketers prey upon that little emotional part of your brain, that so-called lizard brain. And they call it lizard brain. If you look at the, like an alligator brain, it looks a lot like the little thing on the right. And that's your amygdala and all of those little parts of your brain that, and that's all connected to your cerebellum, I think, which clips right on the back of that. And that's for your automated supply, uh, automated actions or autonomous actions, I'm trying to say, in your life. A buddy of mine got punched in the back of the head by a crackhead and he immediately went to the ground, didn't remember it. And he took him a while to recover from it. He's fine now. But he it just messed up that cerebellum where he he just he lost his autonomous functions at least very briefly. Luckily again he's okay. But in addition to those autonomous things, that lizard part of your brain, or the lizard brain I should say, the primal part of your brain helps to keep you alive. And the more I learn about neurology, neurology is a science. All this psychology is like oh god, you know he's out there mamby pamby talking about psychology again and. That doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. But it does. It, it, it's hard to convince people sometimes. And we all have a little bit different psychology, although we all tend to make a lot of the same mistakes. But you can't argue with neurology because neurology is science. Now, some scientists argue amongst themselves, well, the amygdala is your emotions, but there's also another part of your brain connected in here and there, whatever, and blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, it all works the same, okay, on some level with every one of us. So you have the little brain, which keeps you alive, and you it's great that you have that, but that hasn't caught up. The rest of the brain hasn't caught up with, with modern day society. The rest of what's sloshing around up there is what makes you, you, conscious thought, and these things, what makes us us, right? Now, The lizard brain makes you do stupid shit. <laughs> okay. The rest of what's sloshing around up there keeps you do from doing stupid shit. So we got to figure out a way to get from that lizard brain over to the rest of what's sloshing around up there. So here's a question. How long does it take to get from the lizard brain to the rest of what's sloshing around? Well, the answer is two to three seconds, okay? For me, this was a really a, a godsend discovering this because I'm a very emotional being. I'm emotional, egotistical, and I have agreeableness, if that's a word, of about 1%, if that much. That's a slight exaggeration, maybe a half a percent. Not a very agreeable guy. I am, if you agree with me. So, as I was saying in the presentation I did last night for StockCharts.com, and as I said in a, a recent article I wrote about affirmations and my mission statement, if you want to make a big change in your trading, and since we're focused on lessons for the end of the year, looking to next year, then you need to make a small change. And as I've said quite a bit, almost ad nauseum, 
this is one of my small changes and this has saved my ass quite a bit because a lot of times I'm looking at a mediocre opportunity because I just need some action because this family thing is very expensive and because I have some wants, I have some needs. I just moved into this new house and there's hidden expenses out the wazoo. And then two nights ago, the dog vomits all over. I don't know how nice it was, but it looked pretty nice to me. It looks like a fairly nice rug, okay? And uh, the wife throws it out, okay? <laughs> it's like, it's like, what's that smell? It's like, did, did she poop the bed? And then my wife's like, what's that smell? Did he poop the bed? And we come to find out it was a dog, thank God. Anyway, long story endless, this little card has saved my ass. I, Dave Landry, will take the best, the best, underline the, need to capitalize that. Best ogre, that's open to gap reversal and trend trades, even if this means passing on okay opportunities and watching them occasionally take off without me. How long does that take to read? A few seconds, okay? And that might be enough to bypass that little emotional part of my brain and get to the rest of what's sloshing around up there. So you have to train and trick your brain. I didn't intend, I was trying to get a dog and put a, a brain on his head and this is how it came out, which I think is, is even better. <laughs> I think that the, my neurology kick and my excitement about neurology is that, again, we have this shared psychology that we tend to not all agree on but we have this shared neurology that is constantly working against us. And that sounds like a negative, but that's okay. I think the first step to solving a problem is to recognize it. And in trading, it really works against you. You really are going to have a hard time overcoming that equation, of course, unless you really want to. You're going to be sucked in like a moth unless you turn off your screens. You're going to micromanage unless, of course, you follow your trading plan. And you're going to take mediocre trades unless, of course, you read a little card before every trade and think about it a little. So I would or urge you to make little changes, little changes, little changes, do little things, little things, little things. And, you know, the three-second rule, okay? And Curtis Faith wrote a pretty good book. I'm trying to think of the name of it. The Way of the Turtle was one of his, which was pretty good and enjoyable. I swore I would never read the turtle books and Larry McMillan told me, oh, it was pretty good. You know, I had a ping pong table when they got bored trading. And I think if my office was big enough, I'd, I'd put a ping pong table in here, as I've said quite a bit. But it's not, not, not anymore at least. <laughs> but uh, his other book was Trading from the Gut. I believe, and it should be on the books to read page. In fact, I know it is. And he also talked about left brain, right brain. And once you come up with something left brain, which is your more logical part, send it over to the right brain or vice versa. I'm sorry. Your left brain is more logical, right? So if you come up with something from the creative side, your right side, send it over to left to check it out and vice versa. And that's just kind of like thinking through things, allowing that whole brain to work and trying to do that in a relaxed state. Well, that's pretty easy to do when you're doing your trading analysis at the end of the day, because the information is static and not changing. And it's harder to make those decisions in the heat of battle and stress. And by the way, as I've preached before from Steen Barger, which I think I probably found through the Kirk report, he wrote about the fact that it's actually two parts of your brain that are used in trading, one part of the analysis and then one part of the actual trading. And I talked about those two U's quite a bit. I've done some presentations on that. So look around my website and look around uh, YouTube. And I think it's called the two U's. So keep in mind that three second rule it only takes three seconds, as I've said quite a bit before. Greg Morris, in order to not crash to not crash planes and simulators, first in simulators and next in real planes, he would wind a clock, metaphorically wind a clock as he got older. I'm sorry, as the planes progressed and no longer had digital clocks. But back in the F4s, he they had a actual clock. And I keep a little airline clock on my desk. So you can wind a clock, read the card, do something. 
create a habit of doing that one little something that it takes a few seconds and that's all it takes believe it or not and if you still do something stupid then well go have no fun somewhere else go do something stupid somewhere else one thing i've been talking a lot about lately is to time travel taking the trade if you see a trade and you're getting ready to take it or if even if you're doing your analysis even better because that way you, you you're much more likely to use your whole brain okay you're not waking up that little panic monster down in there but time travel and say okay if this thing takes off that would be obviously a great thing but what if it what if it doesn't work what if it turns around and just stops me out how would i feel well on the trades i just showed you even the ones that's taken 20 days to work if i saw them again tomorrow again i would take those trades i think they look pretty good your angst your biggest angst is going to come from those trades that were mediocre when you stop out you're going to really beat yourself up and believe me i beat myself up more than anyone i know okay it's just part of my makeup and i'm willing to embrace that but again those mediocre trades you're going to really beat yourself up on much more than a great trade and then as i've also beat the dead horse on turn off your screens now have some little rewards for good behavior. And I'm thinking about it today. I'm thinking maybe of a little bit bigger reward. I'm thinking about going and spend a little money this afternoon as a reward for all this hard work. But a little reward for me, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, is that I have to get my orders in before I eat breakfast. Now, I do have a little protein powder early in the morning because my brain needs food. It's the way I operate. I probably have some kind of sugar problem, I'm not diagnosed, but I become hangry very easily. So I know I have to eat a little bit, but I'm getting hungry again right around nine o'clock central time, about a half an hour after the market opens. So before I eat, my new habit that I have created, which is, has a reward cycle in it, and that's something that Duig talks a lot. And again, I hope I'm not butchering his name, but in the power of habit he does talk about that part of the habit where you do have a reward and if you think about your bad habits obviously there's a reward in that bad habit the food the cigarette the beer the alcohol whatever the case may be drugs and so on and so forth so in this case it's a positive reward i like to eat i need to eat it's the way my body works especially now that i work out fairly heavily and i'm biking and all this other stuff so my body needs food so i will not again eat breakfast or allow myself to eat breakfast until all my orders are in so that's my little commitment device my little trick and come up with your own and make it a game make it fun and to me if i could trick or train my brain because i know it's working against me I mean, that's step one. Recognize it's working against you. Step two, do something about that, okay?